About a hundred years ago, the mass production of the horseless carriage allowed Americans the freedom to begin traveling many new roads. But in the process, we became a country that runs on oil. We used to drill most of it ourselves, but as cars became larger, more powerful, and more complex, and more Americans could afford to buy them, we began to rely more on imported oil for the gasoline to fuel our dreams. Today, in the last few years before the dawn of the 21st century, Americans are importing more foreign oil than ever before at our peril. Today we import more than 50%. And if we rely solely on gasoline for our steadily increasing transportation needs, that figure is projected to rise to 60% in a few years after the turn of the century. We want to make sure that we don't repeat uh, uh, some of the situations that we have experienced in the past. In the 1970s, of course, uh, some remember the gas lines. And uh, more importantly, the uh, tremendous economic hit to our economy that resulted from the uh, cutting back on oil supplies uh, from some of our suppliers. These American university students may not be old enough to remember the energy crisis of the 1970s, but that hasn't stopped them from doing their part to prevent another one. The future car challenge is part of a larger effort started by uh, President Clinton in 1993 with our partnership for a new generation of vehicles, which as you know is our effort to work with the big three to design a new car for the next century, which we hope will achieve 80 miles per gallon without sacrificing either safety, performance, or affordability. Not a lot of work on how you place it running so far. Um, I'm not sure where we are in terms of the points. We've been really busy working on this car. The 1996-1997 Future Car Challenge, sponsored by the U.S. Department of Energy and the U.S. Council for Automotive Research, was a student effort to develop environmentally friendly supercars. The competition began in 1995 when students from 12 of North America's top engineering schools began transforming current mid-size model Chrysler, Ford, and GM-built family sedans into super fuel-efficient vehicles using electric power, alternative fuels, hybrid technology, lightweight materials, and sophisticated control systems. Well, we took out the original drivetrain engine, replaced it with electric motor and a new engine, um, CNG converted Saturn. The major modifications were that we took out the stock engine and the transmission, we replaced it with our new turbo direct injection diesel engine. That first year, the Future Car Challenge students' innovative use of cutting-edge automotive technologies produced both breakthroughs and heartbreaks. Whichever way it went, they went on. The electrical engineers and the mechanical engineers, I think, have gained more valuable experience than ever would have been learned in any classroom. I'm sure we're going home with a rich baggage of information that we'll take advantage of next year. Next year we hope to optimize the car. Uh, we know right now what we need to improve. We know what we want to look for. We're going to probably work out either a new powertrain scheme or definitely work the bugs out of this one. For me, the most thrilling thing really was to, at the finish line, to see the cars come here after driving over 600 miles from Detroit. I mean, we've never done anything like this before with these kinds of vehicles. In June of 1997, after finishing a grueling second year of testing and evaluations, the 12 future cars made an historic journey to our nation's capital. You know, a couple weeks ago they ran the Indianapolis 500 and they had about a 37% finish and we're way over 75% and that's because of the accomplishment of all of the team members here today. The Detroit to Washington endurance run was symbolic of this one-of-a-kind competition's efforts to develop not only a new class of cars, but a new breed of engineer who has both technical skills and leadership ability. You have to have strong engineering skills, you have to have strong presentation skills, strong written skills, and the proof is really in the pudding here. The vehicles have to perform as they have been characterized in the papers and in the presentations. So the first place winner is truly deserving of being a first place winner. This industry, if we tap these kids, is the competition doesn't have a prayer. <laughs> The 1997 Future Car Awards Ceremony in Washington offered not only an opportunity to honor the winning teams, but the faculty advisors who guided them. And this is Professor Andrew Frank of... <laughs> I guess you know where Professor Frank is from. <laughs> I hope this kind of competition continues. I think it's extremely important for the, for the students, for the country, and for all of us. 
The 1998 Future Car Challenge will be expanded to include three more teams from universities across North America. Like their predecessors, those students will be remembered as pioneers traveling an uncertain path toward 21st century innovation, blazing new trails for others with every passing mile. You are all winners just being here today and putting the kinds of hours that you did into this is setting a standard for our youth. So congratulations to all of you, a job well done. Keep up the good work. Thank you very much.